daily vlog number three. Haven't run out of things to talk about yet. Um, when I was at school, the teachers always used to tell my parents I was like dead quiet and shy and stuff. I am still pretty shy actually, but uh, quiet, I'm not so sure about that. I can talk for Britain these days about anything and everything for hours and hours and hours. Um, today's video is going to be on like how to get into climbing. And it might sound like a funny topic, but actually I think it can be quite tricky to get into climbing when you don't know the right people, perhaps you don't even live in the right sort of place really. You can um, kind of forget about these things when you live sort of where I do and there's a thousand climbers all around you. First off though, I've been swiping on Instagram and I saw something that made me want to go to the co-op. Uh, so I'm gonna nip to the shop, I'm gonna go on my little electric skateboard, um, which uh, I love my car it's not the most fuel efficient, environmentally friendly thing in the world. So I do try and cut out the short journeys wherever possible and the weather's all right at the moment. Not so good in the wet, this thing. So I'm gonna nip down there. It's genuinely quicker from my house to go on the board to the co-op in Flanrig than it is to go in the car. By the time I've reversed out the drive and faffed around a bit, gone down the driveway, shifted the odd sheep out of the way. My neighbor has pet sheep and they don't give a, a monkeys about cars or anything, they just stand there. So you have to get out and shoo them out of the way sometimes. And then you get to Clanrig, it's a pain to park and turn around at that co-op as well. And it, honestly, it's quicker than this, uh, it's quicker to go on this thing, it's 24 miles an hour at full speed, uh, the electric skateboard thing. And obviously, it, I feel like it does a bit for the environment rather than uh, fuel, fuel, fuel in, in the car. Uh, so I'm gonna nip there, important errands to do, and then uh, when I get back, we'll have a chat about that climbing stuff. Good job I went on the board because I've trapped the bottom of my road down there. There's uh, water bubbling out of that yesterday. Uh, and now they've dug it up and they seem to have buggered off and not see It's like 11 o'clock when no one's here to fix it or anything. They just dug a big hole now. Um, no water, but yeah, massive hole, so I can't actually get out of my road. Uh, so fingers crossed they fix that soon because I'm trapped, trapped, trapped. That was literally the only reason I went to the car, really. You can't not have a squirt when you've got squirty cream. Um, I just seen, seen a story on Instagram uh, that someone had shared of them having a lovely hot chocolate cream marshmallows and I couldn't resist it. It's quite cold out there, so nice day. It's sunny, but wild. How to get into climbing, that's the theme of this video. There's a few ways into climbing. Firstly, think about what kind of climbing you want to get into. Is it indoor climbing? Is it bouldering? Is it sport climbing? Trad climbing? Is it winter climbing? Uh, the easiest thing to get into, I guess, for most people is going to be some form of indoor climbing because there's just walls all over the place and there's such great environments to, to get climbing. I've got bouldering, got top roping, got lead climbing, ace. They're a great way into climbing, even if you want to be a superstar trad climber, it's a great way to start. Even if, if you've never done it before and you don't know anyone who can show you the ropes, yeah, good pun there, it wasn't intentional. Um, <laughs> Then go to your local climbing wall and sign up to a little course there. They you know, will run sessions of um, introducing you to bouldering, for example. So they'll just teach you some movement stuff, how to do it safely, all that kind of thing. Top roping sessions as well, so you can learn the sort of fundamental skills that you need to progress into trad climbing, really. Which are you know, stuff like tying in, putting on a harness, um, your belaying, and you know, simple movement stuff again, how to lower off, all that kind of stuff. You don't have to learn those indoors, you can learn them outdoors, but it's just a great way because there'll be a wall close to you to get involved in. And the great thing about it is walls are pretty sociable places. You know, often they'll have like social evenings and stuff as well, so you can meet loads of other climbers because often that's one of the tricky bits of becoming a climber is having people to do it with if you're not from the background that you know, has loads of people around you, especially if you're not in an area like I am, like Flamberis, where there's just thousands of climbers, every other person's a climber. So it's a great way of socialising and getting climbing partners. You can join a club, and that's a great way to meet loads of other people as well. A lot of clubs uh, will want people to have some sort of knowledge of climbing and sort of the basic skills, or they might be happy to progress you on a bit. Um, others might take you from absolute beginner, it just depends on the club really. 
I am massively biased about instructional courses. Of course, I am. It's my, it's my, how I make my living. But doing something like I did, which was I learned to lead trad course, did that. My parents sent me on when I was about sixteen, which is great. It gives you a really good grounding of of the skills you need to um, know for going roped climbing, you know, lead climbing and stuff. It's a good way then of opening up more doors because you know that club might be more interested in having you and people climbing with you but equally that's not just clubs you can meet people off facebook pages like rock climbing uk uk climbing those kind of things but most people will want someone to be like relatively self-sufficient so if you've got that grounding of skills then it, it just opens up more doors to you it also means you can make some judgments on those people you're climbing with now this might sound mean but you know i've climbed with some random people back in the day off ukc for example i've made some lifelong friends quality climbers as well i've also met some people that i just wanted to run away from really quickly not personality wise or anything they're just properly sketchy so if you've got a good understanding of the basic stuff you can start to make some sensible judgments rather than just assuming what they're doing is the right way of doing it so just be careful when you're doing that stuff as a relative novice um, and then you can once you've got that grounding of skills you just get out with people and you can learn together can't you all these times whether it's at the wall or on a learn to lead course or whatever during your club you're just meeting loads of people uh, to share the psych with and, and get out climbing with because you know we're the best one in the world if you've got all these skills but no one to climb with then it's pretty tricky you don't want to just be a soloist it's um, probably a fairly short career isn't it the way I got into it by sort of uh, a school trip which they're struggling at the moment because outdoor centres are closing a lot and especially with COVID, really tough times. So if you've got a minute, go to Save Outdoor Ed on um, Facebook and find their page and like it and give them some, some support because it is a way a lot of us got into climbing. I was lucky enough to then uh, have a couple of friends who were uh, amenable to me, dragging them up some dead easy climbs. I then got a job in and the outdoor industry right at the base level. And they paid for me to do my SBA training, which is what the rock climbing instructor was called back then. And by working in the outdoor industry, I just got immersed in you know the, the world that um, meant I was surrounded by people keen to get out like all the time and moving somewhere like here where there's just an inordinate amount of climbing to be done and people to do it with, like I say. Lots of things you can read as well. Uh, you know, books, I'm just looking at my bookshelf, rock climbing, but the mountain uh, training handbook, that's really good. Uh, loads of YouTube videos. I wonder who does them. Maybe I've done some of them. You can watch them, but it's not quite the same as going on a course with someone and being able to fire questions at and get like instant feedback and stuff in loads of different environments. It's great practicing on your banisters. It's not quite the same as being outside. So they give you a good base knowledge, but you know, it needs to be done outside as well to, to really consolidate it and, and put it into, into context, really. I hope that's been sort of slightly useful. It's a great world to be involved in, and most climbers are like absolutely sort of dead friendly, dead, dead supportive. It can seem uh, quite intimidating when you first step into that world, whether it's a climbing wall or a crag or whatever. But honestly, people, we've all been there, we've all been that beginner, and most of us are really happy to encourage and support as best we can. Um, so yeah, it is a friendly world to be involved in for the most part. I love it, it's great, wouldn't change it for the world. Well, there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, I'm quite enjoying doing these daily vlogs, but don't worry, instructional videos will return very soon, uh, back to normality. Uh, if you've got any questions at all, please do fire away. Happy to answer as best I can. Click the like button, smash the subscribe button, fire us on Insta, fire us on Facebook. Those things I say every time your support is massively appreciated. I'm off to walk the dog. Lovely and sunny, but flipping wild out there. It's supposed to be raining today, um, but uh, it's turned out loads brighter, so that's a win, isn't it? Hope you've enjoyed this video. More videos coming up very soon.